let's talk about networking content and YouTube. So I'm sure I'm probably not the only tech YouTube person that you follow or networking person that you follow. There have been quite a few other really great content creators here on YouTube that also do networking content. And I think a lot of people have noticed the transformation of networking content creators and YouTubers moving to security. And there's a couple reasons for that. I know a lot of people want networking content, right? And it's like, well, why? are all of these great creators moving from networking to security. The first reason is going to be like kind of the lower hanging fruit is that security content is flashy. It's interesting. It gets people curious and networking content for a lot of people isn't as flashy or interesting. And that might be controversial, but I'm just kind of giving my opinion as to why, you know, security content just performs better on YouTube, on TikTok, everywhere. And so for content creators, they want to grow their channels. They want to give people things that they're interested in. And typically it is going to sway them away from networking content to security content. The second reason is that security content in general is a little bit easier to demo and make. So for security content, there is a lot of labs already set up through Try Hack Me or Hack the Box, or you can run VMs and show exploits in different code really easily from your house, from your home. You don't need a ton of extra equipment to be able to kind of show off some of these vulnerabilities and security exploits that are available. The third, and this kind of is linked to the second, <laughs> problem is that it is difficult and very time consuming to make networking content and it can be pretty expensive. So a lot of the bigger content creators do have opportunities from these bigger companies and networking where they can send them equipment or provide them with things to do and show. And then that would end up being kind of like a sponsored or a partnered video. But a lot of times it's kind of the only way you can get access to this equipment to do these demos in this uh, type of content is, is working with one of these companies because this equipment can be really, really expensive. Now, there is a ton of foundational knowledge level content on YouTube, and that's gonna be like the OSI models, how to subnet, you know, different protocols and things like that. And that becomes kind of oversaturated because for those, you can use an emulator like GPT-3, you can use Packet Tracer, and that is not going to be very costly. But then once you get into like, I wanna demo something on like, for instance, maybe like a Palo Alto firewall, that gets expensive. And there are virtual options for those too, uh, but you do need a way to host them and then you need a way to configure them. And it can kind of be difficult if they're, is no production environment because that's a lot what I want to see out of networking content, but it's just so difficult to produce that and emulate what it is like to actually be in a production network. So that is a big reason why there is not as much networking content on YouTube or in general. And it's a lot of times lack of access. Now there were labs provided by some of these companies like Cisco had dCloud and that was available for the public to use and kind of mess around and configure this equipment that they wouldn't have access to otherwise because it's very expensive or maybe they could use that to learn how to do configurations or test a configuration change that they wanted to do in their environment but didn't want to do it in a live production environment. But those kind of got taken down and those labs are not really available anymore. In my opinion, the reason why these have been taken down is a lot of people try and take advantage of these types of labs and compute power for nefarious reasons like crypto mining or, you know, other things. And so, which it's a bummer for us, for people who genuinely want to learn and and use those the appropriate way and so that's kind of why there isn't that higher level networking content past that ccna level on youtube now there are some people doing it 
but again it's very time consuming it takes a lot of effort and sometimes it takes a lot of money to be able to do these things now i want to do more networking content and i will do more networking content in the future but i kind of wanted to give people an insight into the difficulties of producing networking content and why we are seeing so much more security content versus networking content. Now, I hope that gives you a decent explanation. And if you have questions too, you can totally leave them in the comments. If there's something networking in particular that you would like to see that you really haven't found on YouTube or other avenues, let me know in the comments and I can see if I can make that happen and, you know, figure out a way to produce that content in a like cost effective way that is just not a total headache. <laughs> Thank you everyone for kind of all riding along this explanation with me. Please leave your comments and your feedback because I would love to hear it and how you feel about networking creators moving to security, if that's interesting to you or if you would like to see more networking content. But I will be making some more videos, so please like, subscribe, and thank you for hanging out.